The coronavirus ep epidemic has decimated the U.S. workforce. More proof today. The Labor Department reporting that 3.8 million people applied for unemployment claims last week, and that means a staggering 30 million jobless claims over the last six weeks alone. Joining me now, M Maine Senator and former Governor Angus King. Uh, Senator, thanks very much for joining us. Uh, sure. When will Congress act, will Congress act, to do something for all of these millions of people, many of whom have not been able to fight their way through, you know, bureaucratic, clogged state unemployment uh, claims websites? Well, hopefully, hopefully, on. Andrea, that's going to, uh, hopefully that's going to be resolved very shortly. I understand here in Maine, for example, the, the new system will be up and running tomorrow. Um, this was one of the key parts of the big COVID-3 bill that we passed two or three weeks ago, was the expansion of unemployment to cover people like uh, self-employed people, people in the gig economy, people that were working part-time, but also to add to the, to the amount so that it was really a, a livable amount for people to carry them through this, this period. Now, uh, you know, I, I I don't want to cast aspersions. This has been a major administrative task, both in Washington and in in the states. But as I say, I, I understand in Maine, we're going to be uh, ready to receive those applications tomorrow. I'm sure that that's true uh, generally around the country. So uh, that's a big deal. That's a big part of the of the bill to, to try to help us t to help people make it through this uh, terrible period. It goes, it carries through the unemployment expansion carries through the end of July. So uh, it should make a it should make a real difference once we get through all the paperwork. Now, there have been so much uh, backup in bureaucracy and uh, unfair people taking advantage of their relationships with banks also on the payroll production plan, the PPP. Right. Let's talk about whether or not you can persuade Mitch McConnell that state and local governments, for instance, should get some help here. There seems to be a real red-blue divide on that. Well, it shouldn't be. This is, you know, the, the leader on this is Larry Hogan, the Republican governor of Maryland. And what's happened, Andrea, is the first places to get hit most seriously by this were along the coast, were the so-called blue states. But now we're seeing uh, really significant growth in places like Iowa, Nebraska, South Dakota, uh, along in, in the south, Arizona uh, and, and uh, Arkansas, Texas. And I think Mitch McConnell is going to get pressure from his Republican colleagues uh, to do something about this. You know, the problem, Andrea, is you talk about the states and it sounds like these big abstract, you know, governmental bodies, but you're really talking about people. And in Maine, probably a third of our state budget comes into Augusta and goes right back out to the communities in the form of aid for education and revenue sharing. And the communities are hurting too. So if we don't do something, the irony is you'll end up having to have layoffs of people that you most want to have. For example, you talked about the unemployment. <laughs> if the state government doesn't have the personnel, they're not going to be able to process those unemployment claims. So uh, this is not a blue state, red state. I think Mitch McConnell made a big mistake characterizing it that way. The, the states are being hammered, and they can't do what the federal government can do. They have to have balanced budgets. And I think all but two, their fiscal year ends on, on uh, June 30th. And so they don't have anywhere to go except a tax increase, which would be a disaster in the middle of a recession, or uh, drastic personnel cuts to first responders, to nonprofits who get grants from the states. I mean, it's the worst possible thing you could do. So uh, I think Mitch is going to start hearing from uh, some of his Republican colleagues and that we will be able to do something on this. Uh, the question is, what other uh, items is he going to throw on the bargaining table? Senator, thank you very much. Thanks for being with us from Maine, from your home. And on the phone right now is New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy, who's just